First, a very quick overview of social judgment theory. This does not replace the reading. You should do the reading first before you look at this. People have, according to this theory, people have three attitude zones or latitudes related to a belief and incoming information. Acceptance, non-commitment, and rejection. And you can actually have up to five zones. You can have acceptance in the middle and on each side you have non, you know, non-commitment and, uh, and then you have rejection further out. So I'm going to just use three because it's easier to illustrate my points. Your anchor point is the central point of your beliefs about anything. It occurs in the zone of acceptance. A strongly held belief will have a large anchor that is hard to shift with arguments. If you have weak beliefs, they're a small anchor, and it's a lot more easily to shift that to the side. How big are the zones? Well, that depends on the strength of your belief, which is often tied to our ego involvement, which is really just a fancy name for how relevant is it to you? How important is it to you? How much are you involved with it? The reason I bring up relevance is because studies show that motivation to process interpretation, which is informal education, is affected mainly by its relevance to the audience. And I would make the argument that virtually in all cases, your decision to choose to process information is based a whole lot on how relevant it is to you. In other words, does it affect your personal world? You know, this makes sense because there's lots of information out there. Why spend our precious time on things that don't affect our personal world? We can't. So if you look at relevance, it's often information related to your immediate task. I'm trying to build something. I'm trying to get somewhere. Information that helps me do that, that's highly relevant at that time and place. Your relationships, your wife, your spouse, your husband, uh, your kids, your mother, father, and the closer these people are, the more relevant they are. The more distant, the less relevant. Places, well, the place you live is more relevant to you than you know, the, another state or another country. Places you've been are more relevant than places you haven't been. Your interests, hobbies, there's relevance. Anything that you believe affects you, danger, necessary resources, in other words, resources you need to survive, they have relevance. So if you want people to pay attention, you have to make it relevant to that target audience. Again, another reason for understanding who your audience is. So you have to know your audience. So let's start looking, go back to social judgment theory and kind of look at these latitudes or zones. If you have high ego involvement, in other words, something is very relevant to you, you have a large anchor, a narrow latitude of acceptance, and a large latitude of rejection. In other words, you're not willing to listen to things that are too far outside of what you believe in. If you have low ego involvement, in other words, it's not that important, you have a small anchor and a wide latitude of non-commitment. A lot of stuff you just don't really care about. It doesn't get your, your dander up. It doesn't make you irritated. Moderate ego involvement, medium-sized anchor with latitudes that are more or less consistent in size. Okay, but why does the size of the zones and the location of the anchor point matter? I'm glad you asked. It affects your ability to communicate. Very specifically, arguments in our latitude of rejection that's over here in this R will be rejected. We are not willing to pay attention to those arguments. We will not even process them because they're too far outside of our belief system. Arguments in our latitude or zone of non-commitment, well, we may or not be we may or may not consider them. We may or may not be willing, depends on what else is available. Well, to me, that doesn't sound like a very good recipe for success, something that somebody may or may not pay attention to. Arguments in our latitude of acceptance, well, we're like likely to be attended to and accepted. That makes sense. An argument that matches the anchor point. It's like, you know, preaching in the choir, so what? Well, it makes the anchor bigger and it narrows the latitudes of non-commitment and acceptance. So the larger that anchor gets, the less willing you are to pay attention to information that's outside of that particular belief, that's for, that is far away from that particular belief. Well, how are we gonna shift attitudes then? Well, 
offer information as discrepant as possible with the anchor while being in their latitude of acceptance. In other words, if you look at this diagram, the anchor is clear over to the left, the argument is clear over to the right side of the latitude of acceptance. What ha happens in that case is the anchor will shift a bit towards that argument and we'll interpret that information to make it seem closer to the anchor. Oh, what they really mean is this, which, yeah, that's, that's closer to what I think. Okay, so you find middle ground. So if you want to shift attitudes, you're going to have to do it bit by bit by bit. Okay, may require a small bit of time if you want to create a big shift over time. Why does this shift occur? To eliminate cognitive dissonance, which takes us right into cognitive dissonance theory. And it's one of many cognitive constancy theories. There's balance theory, congruity theory, Rokic's value theory, theory, but I'm just going to concentrate on cognitive dissonance theory because it's one of the best known and most widely referred to. It's based on the belief that humans want harmony. In fact, all of the cognitive constancy theories are based on that. Cognitive dissonance theory. We have a drive to avoid and eliminate cognitive dissonance. Right? We want consistency. We want consistency between our beliefs and between our beliefs and our behaviors. So first thing we try to do is we try to avoid dissonance. We surround ourselves with people of the same attitudes. We also expose ourselves to information that supports our beliefs. And we ignore information that doesn't. Okay, so if you actually get people who are very polarized they can't talk to each other because they're ignoring the information because it's too far away from their anchor, their belief system. And that appears to be, well, if you wanted to look at what's happening in Washington, D.C. right now, you could look at cognitive dissonance theory and probably make some pretty good guesses about what's going on. So we're not willing to process information that would cause dissonance that we can't resolve. Right? We can resolve, actually, some dissonance. If dissonance occurs, you find a way to resolve it. If you try to resolve dissonance in beliefs, well, that's what happened here where we offered an argument that was away from the anchor, but within the zone of acceptance. The anchor shifts towards the argument, we interpret the incoming information to make it seem closer to the anchor, and so we make those compatible. Bye-bye cognitive dissonance. Dissonance between belief and behavior. Now, you should have done the cognitive dissonance exercise. If you did it and dissonance occurred, you probably did one of three things to take care of that. You could rationalize, oh, that thing I thought was important, it wasn't as important after all. You can change your attitude. Well, I guess rationalizing is, well, I had a reason for giving my attitude. Changing attitude is saying, well, that thing I thought was important really isn't that important. Or you can change your behavior. Well, gosh, I'm going to do something about it. But you were, I guess the point is, if dissonance occurred, you did something to get rid of it because we don't like having dissonance in our mind. Let's look at the ties to benefit to cost theory. We're willing to attend to and process based on benefit to cost ratio. We consider relevant information to be more of a benefit than irrelevant information. That's why relevancy is important. It's a factor when you're looking at benefit. We consider cognitive dissonance to be a cost, so you need to stay within the zone of acceptance. A little distance is okay because we can resolve it too much and it gets over into, I'm going to ignore it.